So human communication is very, very fast and complicated. Human face-to-face -face communication. And babies already are in this system by four months. They're already so proficient at it. They're such good communicators. I'm Beatrice Beebe. I run a basic research lab in mother infant face to face communication at Columbia. I study nonverbal communication, face to face nonverbal communication, and I study it in mothers and babies. And I study how each one responds to the other moment by moment, fraction of second by fraction of second. And the way we study them, we call microanalysis. We like to say that microanalysis is a social microscope. It allows you to see things that you don't know are there because the face-to-face -face communication is so fast and subtle and you might not really catch it in real time. Below real time, there's an underwater, <laughs> underworld of interactions that you can capture with microanalysis. The research method actually allows you to show that this process is bi-directional. Each person is affecting the other person's behavior moment by moment. And you see that the baby is a very important player in this interaction. It's not all driven by the parent. In the educational viewing, we first take a split screen video of the mother and the baby playing with the instructions, just play with your baby as you would at home with no toys. Then I play with the baby for a few minutes. Why do I play? Because when babies interact with a stranger, a novel partner, sometimes they show a broader range of capacity, a different range, different ability to engage. So the stranger-infant interaction is always informative. And we, in our research, we always do a stranger-infant interaction. And in the educational viewing, it's very helpful also. And the structure of it is that once we've made those films, then the mother and I look at them together. So you can see here that the mother and I are talking together. And this is what we're talking about, right? So one camera has me and the mother talking about the film, and the other camera has the particular part of the film that we're examining. When I do educational viewings with parents, Parents say things to me like, oh my goodness, my baby notices every little thing. I can't believe it. You are going to see a lovely mother infant pair. The baby is four months. A mother very, very tuned into her baby. A baby who ends up securely attached. This mother was a student in my lab and then she um, got married, she had a baby, and I invited her back for an educational viewing of a film of her and her baby when the baby was four months. This mother and baby had a really, really hard time because the baby had colic. When a baby has colic, that means the baby is inconsolable. The baby has hours and hours of inconsolable crying and all parents become frantic because it's so disturbing and the baby is so unhappy. Colic is, some people think colic is an immature digestive system. The good thing about colic is it resolves on its own, usually by around three to four months. But the bad thing about colic is there's really not much you can do about it when it's happening. So this mother and baby had this very, very difficult experience. We just happened to catch them at such an interesting moment of transition where the baby's colic had just receded and the baby was now calm, but the mother was still in colic mode. I live in Long Island, so it takes me, it took me a little while to get here. And we came in when my son was, I think, three and a half months old. And my son was colicky, like for the first four months of his life. And it was hard. It was hard on him, and it was hard on me and my husband. So I tried to time it just perfectly, so he would nap in the car, and if we would get out of the car, and we would go into the chamber, that's how we called it, 
and do the filming. Well, Max didn't, didn't like that plan at all. So we got there and he was already a little fussy and um, we did the filming. Okay, <laughs> we're ready. So first we're gonna see the film in real time and then we're gonna see it frame by frame. Oh, and now you gotta stay in that car seat a bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I know you your race seats, but you gotta stay in this car seat just a little bit. Here, we can take this away. This is hours, minutes, seconds, and thirtieth. So we're gonna go from second seven to second eight. Right? So from seven to eight, watch the mother do mock surprise. Mock surprise, mock surprise. Now seven to eight, watch the baby. He slightly orients to her. His head moves to the left, and his left hand moves a little. See that? So he slightly orients to her. He's still looking at her. And the mom has the baby's foot in her hand. Actually, she has both feet in her hands. So now, eight to nine, the mother sort of plays with her face, and the baby watches. There's a little shift in the baby's mouth on the left, and his left hand moves. So he's, he's watching her very closely. Then the baby sort of waves at her, acknowledges her in a way. Then the mother opens back up into her smile, 9 to 10. The baby's hand comes down. The mother has a big smile, and the baby has only an interest face. So here we have a, just a, an ordinary moment where the mother seems to want to bring the baby up from interest into maybe more playful, more smiling faces. That's second 10. So then she flirts with him a little. She, she moves her head up like that. And the baby's hands move, but the mouth goes into a kind of compressed lips. Compressed lips is sort of a little tension, like that. Then the mother has a nice smile, nice smile, but the baby is really only still in an interest face. And then the mother smiles some more from 10 to 11, and the baby is not smiling more, stays in an interest face, but doesn't smile more. So this is kind of an ordinary type of very slight mismatch, you, you might say, where the mother's in a, a higher range, sort of medium positive range, and the baby is in interest range. And this happens all the time that the parents wants to bring the baby up, but this baby's not coming up. Okay. But he's still looking at her, still engaged, and then the mother's still playing, seeing if she can get the baby to play with her. And the baby is responding, right, with the mouth and the, and the hand, but he's not actually becoming more positive. He's staying in the interest range. Then 13, the mother heads go down a little, so less smile, and that's the moment the baby looks away, which is also ordinary. The babies look away when they come, become a little over aroused. They re-regulate and they come right back into the engagement as soon as they re-regulate. So the baby looks away and then turns away a little more. And you watch the mother just slightly monitoring that with her mouth. Mouth opens a little. And then the baby turns a little further away. A little further away. And now you see the mother going, mm. uh-oh. A little uh-oh. And she breathes in. And then the baby goes, this is an arch. This generally means the baby is a little uncomfortable, so the baby has a little arch. And the mother, you see the mother breathe in like she sort of gets it, uh-oh. And then the baby shows a little more discomfort. And you see the mother going, ooh, ooh. So she really, here, is actually joining a discomfort that the baby is showing. Right, this, this little arch thing is a little uncomfortable. And she's joining, she's joining that little bit of distress with that ooh face. And then she closes her eyes a little. 
And then the baby looks at her. Baby comes back, looks at her. And they have a moment of mutual gaze and they're both in the interest range. Then the mother says, ooh, right? And when I asked her, what does this face say? She says something like, you don't like this, right? Ooh, you don't like this? Is this uncomfortable for you? And then even more, ooh, you don't like this? And the baby's okay, right? The baby's watching her and the baby's calm. So this is also a bit of a mismatch, right? Because she's in a way overreacting to the baby's little bit of discomfort that he showed. And she's anticipating that the baby is gonna lose it and go into colic mode. And I think that that negative face represents her anticipation of the baby's intense distress. And it probably represents how she also felt during those last three months of intense colic, how distressed she was. And she's here anticipating more distress, but the baby's fine. So this is the mismatch. And then she's sort of coming down off the negative face, the baby's watching it, but the baby's fine. And again, the mother still, still has a bit of a frown here, the baby turns away for a moment. And they continue like this, with the baby slightly turned away, and the mother um, feeling a little sad, and then they, have a, they go into another round of the mother showing a distressed face herself, kind of anticipating more distress of the baby. However, when I showed the mother this part of the film, she really understood that she was a little overreactive. And together we, we realized that she could calm down now, that the baby was really okay, and that she could calm down now. Then you can see, five minutes later, they actually are in a very different place with each other. The baby's looking, the mother again does a mock surprise, the baby smiles, she kisses the feet, she kisses the feet, the baby has a nice smile, the very, there the baby looks at her. This is actually a beautiful moment, where they're both smiling, really happy, really happy. So they have that, that is really their basic relationship, like this. So what's going on there? What are you feeling? What's he feeling? He's coming back and I'm like, hey, mm -hmm. I'm greeting him. Mm -hmm. He's coming back and you're greeting him with mm -hmm. mock surprise, yeah. And then let's just see what happens next. Let's see if we go slow-mo, we, we can see what's happening there. That's, that's a beautiful moment, isn't They're it? They're both you, up. Yeah. you both a little up? They're both up. And up. Mm -hmm. What's he feeling? He's unsure. Yeah. Yeah, tentative and, t and turns away. He's unsure. Yeah. What's he, he feeling there? One's out. Yeah, the arch. And now, what are you feeling? Stay. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But there's a little sadness in your face there. Yeah, because yeah. He, he goes out. Yeah. And of course, I want him to be in. Yeah. In. And he, there he is looking at you, but tentative. What's this? What's in your face? What are you feeling there? Like, you don't like this? Mm -hmm. This is not for you? Mm -hmm. You don't like this. Like a quizzical, you don't yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. And what are you feeling there? I think are you I'm unsure. Mm -hmm. Are you essentially representing the negative feeling that you think he has, maybe? Yeah. Like he doesn't like this and you're expressing... I mirror him a lot. Yeah, you're expressing like this isn't, isn't, isn't good for I'm you. Mirror, this yeah. isn't good. He turns away. And what do you feel? I'm sad. Yeah. And he's looking at you right there, yeah. right? And so he sees you saying... That I see that he is uncomfortable. Yeah. He sees you mirroring his discomfort. And there's that face. Interesting, huh? Mm hmm You really show a lot of what you imagine his negative feeling is. True. You really are representing that. So what do you make of that piece in there? I think then we're on. Yeah. Yeah, and you're really... I'm relieved. 
Yeah, and you're you're talking to him in his language, mm -hmm. right? You're you're um, getting all his intonations mm -hmm. and really right on his wavelength. Mm -hmm. It's like that was like a really beautiful little stretch there. Mm -hmm. And then yes, I was impressed with this piece that when he gets a little fussy in his vocalizations, you you stay right on that wavelength. See how you match the sigh? The oh, oh, that was beautiful. In these moments when he's about to mm -hmm. lose it, mm -hmm. what would I do to calm him down again? So just as, you know, what I would try when he turns away, I think, is um, I would wait. Because, of course, the turning away is the signal that he's overstimulated yeah. and wants less rather yeah. than more. Yeah. Both of you have to learn to calm down and not take it too seriously yeah. when he's unhappy because he's definitely better. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. He looks down, I wait. He looks back, I say hello. And I match all those little funny Squeaking mouth sounds. sounds. Yeah, mouth gestures. So what do you think? What would you say he feels? What would you say I feel? I think the overall tone is more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I haven't spent <laughs> you know, three <laughs> months with a colicky baby. <laughs> I can afford to be relaxed. <laughs> yeah. And how's he responding? He's calmer. He's, yeah. he's happier. Yeah. He does seem to be responding to, to what, I, what I say is less is more. Mm -hmm. I don't move in on him. Yeah, no you don't. <gasps> they love mouth movements. Mm -hmm. <gasps> okay, that's where he starts to get fussy. And I say, can you use my hand? Mm -hmm. Do you want it? Pushes it, yeah. but holds on to it. And I start to get slower. Yeah. See that? Mm -hmm. See what I do there? Yeah. I really kind of go get mesmerized. Yeah. I get dreamy. Mm -hmm. I keep it really low tone and in terms of level of activity. Because he's on the edge mm -hmm. of over arousing. I'm going to stay connected but not over arouse. Mm -hmm. So this is like really where less is more. Mm -hmm. So I really need to work on not being overly anxious the second he's about to fall. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Your best bet yeah. is actually move back and wait rather than move forward and, and try and get something. Yeah, I probably have to like just count to 15 and <laughs> sit back <laughs> before I yeah. jump in and try yeah. to get him because back. Because he can re-regulate on his yeah. own now. Yeah, he does. And he's very sensitive. He's sensitive to just overstimulation the mm -hmm. most. And because he's been so overstimulated yeah. in his body for so long, he's been so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's really helpful. Oh, good. You're right. Like we've been, we we're so anxious. The second he's mm -hmm. just about to lose it, mm -hmm. we rush in there mm -hmm. and we pick him up and we play mm -hmm. games with him mm -hmm. just to keep him distracted. Keep him distracted. Keep yeah, him keep happy. Keep him from losing it. Yeah. Um, and it worked. It worked. It I kept mean, everybody sane for two months. Well, what really worked. And now you have to shift your yeah. strategy. Yeah. And now we have to kind of switch gears. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So reviewing those types of Beatrice and seeing where we mismatched and where we, where I was not able to match his affect and his upset showed me, A, I'm anxious, like I want him to be happy, I want him to be comfortable, but something in me just couldn't do it at that moment. And it also showed me that despite all the theory, you're not perfect. I think the second when Max starts to cry, we just go like overload. You know, we just like drop everything we're doing and we run to his rescue and we try everything and maybe that's just too much. Maybe we just have to readjust because now he's getting better. That was four months. Like now he's getting better. And our, our like tolerance to his, um, to his crying, I think it's not, it's not where it should be. So... The filming was really helpful in that my husband and I, we could really sit down and be like, all right, so let's like reboot our system and let's try to like start over. Like, where are we now? What are we going to do now when he's crying? Like, maybe we don't have to run to his rescue right away. And we didn't. Sitting down with her was painful and hard, but at the same time, it was very insightful and liberating. That's when I actually attended to him and I did step back and I did give him a space and I did like back away from him and stop like being in his face. And that's when he came back to me, meaning like from this like disengaged kind of position, he came back to me and he responded to me again. And that was the amazing thing, like we really, took that to heart and um, soon enough like we were more relaxed and he was more relaxed and it really showed me that this is not a one-way street. I think what I took back from that is that it's okay, like it's okay not to be perfect 100%. It's just was very beneficial to us. In society you think like yes the mother or the dad impacts the infant's behavior but it's a two-way street and I think Beatrice's research really shows that. that Yes, you affect the infant, but the infant affects you. And for me, that was very true. I would like people to be able to see that the baby is extraordinarily responsive to all the little tiny movements of the parent. And they might express their response with a little head shift or a little hand gesture, or a little foot kick, or a little mouth opening. But when you watch these films frame by frame, you see that with every movement of the parent, the baby, it's a dance. And the two of them are in extraordinary communication. It's very fast. Educational viewings of films of mother and infant interaction are a way of helping parents see more of what their babies communicate and see more of what they communicate to their babies.